hello, I'm Dr. Daniel Griffin. And I'm Dixon Dupanier. And today we're gonna to be discussing hepatitis mm -hmm. A, B, and C. Right, are there other letters associated with it? There, no, there certainly are. <laughs> and this is an expansive topic, so we're gonna yeah. be just sort of touching, touching the surface, so to speak. This will be an introduction, get people kind of thinking about um, the different hepatitides, the different, these are all viral hepatitis types, right. viral hepatitis. Um, the most common causes of infectious hepatitis are hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C, but there are others. Um, you know, the first time I talked about, I gave a overseas discussion on hepatitis, mm -hmm. I was working in the Western Dominican Republic. I was right by the Haitian border up in the mountains there in a little town called the Restauracion. And it mm -hmm. was the, the nurses at the hospital requested that I do a presentation. Oh, right. And so we had uh, the nurses, the physicians and everyone, and we got together and we talked about um, hepatitis. And wh why, do you think the, why do you think the healthcare providers were interested in hepatitis? Well, if I were a healthcare worker, in an area which was endemic for hepatitis and I didn't have it, I might be afraid of catching it myself. So I'd like to know how it's transmitted. So I think that actually was, um, or is the motivation in a lot of settings, yeah. is there are certain parts of the world with a very high prevalence of certain hepatitis viral infections. Um, hepatitis A is just an acute infection and then it goes away. But hepatitis B, and hepatitis C infection can be lifelong yes. and then can be transmitted. So in a lot of developed parts of the world where there's resources, a lot of healthcare providers are actually vaccinated for hepatitis B. Good. You also get hepatitis A, but that's not really necessarily for help being a healthcare worker. Um, hepatitis C though, there's no vaccine. Uh -huh. So it becomes all about understanding how you might be exposed and protecting yourself. Right. Um, so let, let's go through one at a time. Just to, So we'll, we'll start with hepatitis A. Um, how does one get hepatitis A? Um, hepatitis A <laughs> is, is really oral transmission. It's you, you eat something. And it is, it is prevalent all throughout the world. Right. Um, you know, people say, oh, I'm traveling. I'm leaving New York City, uh, thinking I should get my hepatitis A vaccine. I'm, thinking you might be safe. Where are you traveling? <laughs> we have plenty of hepatitis A in New York City. We do. Um, and it's associated with, with, again, with contaminated food. Someone has hepatitis A. They're shedding the virus. They're not washing their hands or don't have the hygiene you might like. And then it contaminates. And then someone consumes the food. And then they get hepatitis A. It's a self-limited illness in in majority of cases. There's no chronic phase. Um, the mortality is quite low in an area where people have proper nutrition and, right. and can access to supportive care. But now let's go to hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is sexual transmission. Mm -hmm. It can be transmitted through needle sticks, so healthcare providers are at risk. Okay. Um, hepatitis C, similar modes of transmission. So hepatitis B and hepatitis C, um, you start worrying about blood exposure, semen exposure, um, it's things that healthcare workers might Sounds be like exposed HIV. to. <laughs> Actually, and when someone has a blood exposure, they might often think, I'm so worried about HIV. What? But hepatitis B and hepatitis C are also um, trans, potentially transmitted. Sure. So we talked a little bit about the clinical disease. Hepatitis A usually lasts um, self-limited, but it can last weeks to a few months. Mm. So it might be self-limited, but the inflammation of the liver and the associated fever and malaise and jaundice that you might get um, can affect people for <coughs> weeks to months. Usually we see a full recovery, um, although there is a certain percent of the time when we can see death and long-term health consequences. Mm. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C can have similar acute presentations. The difference here being with hepatitis B and C, you can have a chronic um, infection. Yeah. Hepatitis B in some parts of the world, 
high percentage of the population is infected with hepatitis B. It can also, we'll add another transmission, from mother to child. Oh dear. Right? So there's perinatal um, acquisition, and there's, there can be quite a high rate of perinatal transmission. Um, tattooing and other exposures can be associated with hepatitis transmission. Oh. Piercings, if people are not cleaning things properly. Um, hepatitis C, actually, there's a huge effort in a lot of parts of the world because now we can do what with hepatitis C? We can cure it. Oh, we can cure it. <laughs> <laughs> so That's hep- right, there is a drug. So it's now. interesting, there hepatitis B, we have an effective vaccine that can protect us against getting hepatitis B. Right. Um, but we don't have the ability to effectively cure. We can treat hepatitis B, which we do in some settings, but we don't have the ability to cure hepatitis B. But hepatitis C, we can actually cure. Interesting. We don't have a great vaccine for preventing it, but we have very expensive medications that can cure it. <laughs> very expensive. And the cost of about $1,000 a day for a 60-day treatment. Oh. I believe you were the one that came up with that pricing structure. Absolutely. I wanted to give it out for free, but you but wanted no, to. You agreed to share the profits with me. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another aspect to hepatitis B that I'm familiar with because I was at one point uh, briefly associated with uh, Baruch Blumberg, who was a graduate of our medical school, actually. Okay. And went on to work on hepatitis B as a result of a, an initial exposure to that subject through his fourth year medical elective in the tropics that he took under the auspices of uh, Dr. Harold Brown, okay. who was my mentor as well. So uh, he later on discovered not just the fact that uh, the hepatitis B produces lots of capsid protein, which had a name at that point, it was called the Australia antigen. Okay. Which they thought was only localized in Australia. Of course, it's everywhere. But later on, he he discovered the fact that hepatitis B sufferers, some portion, particularly Asians, both males and females, but I think more more male than female, if I'm not mistaken, can go on to develop liver cancer. So actually, I'm glad you bring that up because that's, so you have your hepatitis B or C, you've made it through this acute period of time, Why does it matter that you're infected? What is the problem? Exactly. And so one, um, I'll say, is cancer. Yes. The other is um, cirrhosis, the scarring of the liver. Sure. And um, this can be difficult because um, there can be a progression where you go on and you develop cirrhosis, and then that can lead to cancer. That's your hepatitis C scenario, where you have hepatitis C for many, many years, there's a degree of inflammation that develops. This can lead to scarring, which ultimately lead to cancer. Hepatitis B virus can cause cirrhosis, but sometimes it can skip right to a cancer. Wow. So the whole watchful wow. waiting can be an issue. So actually you won a Nobel Prize <laughs> for discovering that if you vaccinate against hepatitis B, you can prevent cancer. Liver cancer? Yeah. Caused by hepatitis viruses? is the number one solid organ cancer in the world. That's remarkable. So the majority will say that the most common solid organ cancer in the world is caused by an infection. I'll be darned. Tremendous, right? It is. He's one of my heroes. <laughs> You're my other one. <laughs> well, so, so what I'll do, we'll recap just a little. Hepatitis A, you can prevent with vaccination, you can prevent with hygiene. Um, it's acute, it's self-limited, may last weeks or months. There is a present but low risk of death. Hepatitis B, you can prevent with vaccination. Yes. Um, and again, avoidance of high-risk activities, we'll say. That's right. Um, we can treat but not cure it. Yeah. Um, hepatitis C, we have no vaccine, but we now have curative treatments, um, which are, I'll say, relatively complicated there are even in the world of infectious disease or gastroenterology there are people that specialize in doing that Um, there's updated guidelines because the therapies and the options are changing 
And so people will actually look up maybe and see what are the treatments for a particular uh, type of infection. And then we can actually achieve cure. And I will say greater than 80% of cases. So it's a changing, exciting area of medicine. Indeed. And an area where a lot of the world is suffering from this. So it's an area where we can make a big difference. Sounds great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.